Hello, welcome to Encore's music show. That was Bless Your Heart from One of a Kind Voice, experimental pop artist Serpent with Feet. This is tender music that the world needs right now. It's from his debut album, Soil, a record offering us complex visions of gay love fusing avant-garde R&B with gospel. Serpent with Feet came into the studio to chat to Rochelle Harrison Pless about his new music, being a former choir boy and working with Bjork. Serpent with Feet, thank yes. you so much uh, for being with us today. Now, your name is your mantra, fluid mm -hmm. but grounded, is what I saw you say in a previous interview. So, mm -hmm. I'd like to know what keeps you grounded. My readings, um, there are a lot of writers that I love deeply. I'm a big fan of Gwendolyn Brooks and Toni Morrison, because I have a, a lot of writing. And you've dabbled in many different musical styles over the years. At one point, you had your heart set on a classical career. Mm -hmm. Did it take you a while to, to sort of find your groove and find what you, what you really wanted to do? I think I'll forever be exploring. Um, I, I think that's what's fun about making, is that you get to make, exploring my music. You know, like, what, what is jazz harmony with, uh, with classical motifs? Just, I'm really interested in how all these things come together. And I always will be, so. Boy, every time I worship you, my mouth is filled with honey. Boy, as I build your throne, I feel myself growing. Sowing love into you is my job. Sowing love into you is my job. So you've said that your lyrics represent you not being accepted in the past and not being able to accept yourself after sort of stifling and restricting things for mm. years. What kind of emotions were, were stirred up during the songwriting process set for your debut album? It was really important for me to mix all the vocals really in the front and not um, have them eclipsed by production. Um, it was just time to be loud. <laughs> and I don't know if I was quiet before, but I think I was... Um, a lot more hesitant to articulate what I was feeling before, and there was less hesitation <laughs> for this for this album. And you grew up in a religious family. You attended church when you were younger. You sang in the choir. Uh, how did your parents take it when you decided to to drop the sort of the classical aspirations? They had seen it. Coming, I mean, it's always been a funny thing because my teachers have always suggested that I do classical music and I always rebelled. <laughs> um, but I think for my mother specifically, she, she knows me very well and uh, she knows and she still will say that I am not the most compliant person. <laughs> so, in the classical world, are there, there are rules that I'm pretty of. headstrong. And I, I guess I don't think that I am, but seeing the way that I respond to certain <laughs> to certain things, I'm like, okay, maybe I am a bit. I read somewhere as well that you said that um, you don't think you could have worn a tux anyway to be yeah, beanie. <laughs> Just, like, it wouldn't have gone with your style. I would have like had to wear a beanie and like <laughs> some some <laughs> boots or something. I want to go back to speaking about your uh, album, Soil. You mm. worked with Grammy-winning uh, Adele producer, Paul Epworth, mm -hmm. but you also worked with Bjork on one of her tracks. What was it like working with, with people like that? Humbling, really exciting, um, and a challenge because I'm always asking myself, am I going to show up for myself the way that I need myself to? And so it's always exciting to see Will I? <laughs> Will I show up in the studio? Um, will I show up uh, when it's time to, to songwrite? So um, the song with Paul Epworth, like I um, co-wrote and co-produced with him in London. Um, so being in the studio and just trying to, to, to exercise my pen <laughs> in a way that I hadn't. Um, and the same way with, with Bjerk. To do more than 
I was satisfied just being her protege. You know, yeah. she had has become a mentor to me. Like I sent her all my demos and can text her a million questions about like, so what should I do? And she she advises. So I wasn't expecting like trying to get like a, a collab or something like that. But she asked, and I was in a hotel and I fell off my bed. Like literally, I was just like I was not expecting uh, <laughs> her to ask me. One thing I really notice when watching your live performance is, is, is the raw emotion that comes across and there's something sort of very real and genuine um, mm -hmm. that, that comes through. How do you transmit that in, in everything that you do? That is a good question. I should be asking that. Um, I, I think <laughs> trying to become a better listener, um, just I, I think in daily life when people talk, really listen, like be an active listener and not check out or text or wonder what I want to eat. So I think the same thing applies when I'm singing, when I'm performing, because I'm trying to listen to what the audience needs. And like I had a show in Madrid and a show in Barcelona a few days ago, and audiences are different. And the audience tonight in Paris will be different, and the audience in London will be different. So it's not a one-size-fits-all. So some audiences require me to be louder and rumbling and some audiences want me to be and they don't say it but but you can you can just sense what they need babe it is cool with me that you want to die and i'm, I'm not, not gonna, gonna stop, stop you if you try after graduation you you spent time here in I the did. french capital I uh did. was it for a, a few months or a, a few, few months. right and uh, I just wanted to know, what were your favorite memories of that time? Did you sort of, were you on the music scene or were you, what, what do you remember about living in Paris? Oof, a lot. I remember walking along the Seine. Um, uh, I spent my birthday by the Seine. Like I had made friends here, so that was really nice. I remember, um, I love, I might I say it correctly, gaufres. Gaufres? Gaufres. 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 Oh. I think they're Belgian. My, in my face. Well. <laughs> but, but we do them here too. <laughs> yes. I ate a lot of those. Um, I remember um, the smell of fresh bread yeah. early oh, in the morning God. at 4 a.m. <laughs> and that, that for me, it's, it's such a different thing um, because in the U.S. This, it's not a common sight to see people going to the, uh, the bakery and getting bread in the morning. And so like looking out my window and seeing that, I'm like, this is so amazing. So. I love grocery stores. I spent a lot of time in the grocery store here. Are you going back to the grocery stores? I love Paris, grocery stores. I love the goat cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I remember. Chevre. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. Chevre and gouffre. Mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. it. Serpent with feet. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. He's one of the Encore team's favourites at the moment. Serpent with Feet speaking to Rochelle Harrison Pless about his debut album, Soil. Next to Damon Albarn's Brexit album with supergroup The Good, The Bad and The Queen. In a week where Brexit appeared to stumble toward some of some sort of a conclusion, it's apt the first album about the referendum is released. Mary Land comes nearly 12 years on from the band's self-titled debut that united Clash bassist Paul Simonon with Nigerian drummer Tony Allen and guitarist Simon Tong of The Verve. Some say it's all Barnes' greatest ever album. It's a sad, angry gasp of exasperation for a country he loves that he feels has gone. This is the title track. Stand on the beach when the storms amplify all the voices that I care for and the ghosts are all sacred in the saliva that lasts for a day. There's nothing that I can do anyway, anyway. What am I doing here? Waiting for you. Anderson Pack has released his new album Oxnard. It was Dr. Dre's 2015 album Compton that lifted Anderson Pack out of niche territory. Now the pair join forces again with Dre taking up production duties on Pack's third album. The record, named after the California rapper's hometown, features a staggering number of guests, including Snoop Dogg, 
Pusha T, Q-Tip and J. Cole. It experiments with every turn and pushes his so-called Beach Trilogy following Venice and Malibu to its final conclusion. The rapper explores the fallout of newfound fame but retains his sunny disposition. This is Tints featuring Kendrick Lamar. I'm going to leave you with music from French hip-hop duo Big Flo and Ollie's third album, La Vie de Rêve, out this week. This is Nous Aussi Deux. Remember our website, follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Monsieur le commissaire, on va tout vous expliquer. On a...